Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ricky with TechBuds Garage. And today I wanted to cover a very simple concept for those that are just getting started. I think that, you know, we can all agree that when it comes down to getting started, especially investing in a new market, the hardest part is always simply just that. So I'm going to be talking about three simple tips that can get you started in turning, you know, your first $1,500 to $2,000 or $2,000 to about $2,500. Um, and again, this is for those that have a disposable, you know, $1,500 to anywhere from $2,000. And especially for those that are in Arizona, I'm in Gilbert, Arizona. Uh, and one of the things that I've enjoyed most about Arizona is I'm originally from California, um, is that you pay no sales tax, right? on private party sales. And this is when it comes down to investing in cars. So when you go to a dealership, not only do you have to pay for the car, but you have to pay the taxes and the dealer fees, right? When you buy a car, let's say something like Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, or let go, private party, right? So it's a person to person sale. You don't pay sales tax. Even when you go register the car, all they charge you is registration. And the really beautiful thing about Arizona is you get a prorated refund. I don't know if a lot of you guys know that, but you guys can Google it, search it, Arizona, you know, registration refund. It's, it's an amazing thing. So if I keep a car for, you know, two months, but I've, you know, uh, paid for it for 12 months, then I get a prorated 10 month, you know, uh, refund back. And that's, that's so amazing, especially if you wanted to kind of like, you know, approach this car market and view it as an investment. I know a lot of you guys, and especially in the traditional aspect, might not view investing in the car market an investment. Uh, people usually view it as a depreciation asset. And I understand that in the very, you know, traditional aspect it is. But uh, in this video, I'm going to show you um, how someone with $1,500 can make their first $500 profit. So turning that $1,500 to 2000 or 2000 to $2,500. Um, and I really like to focus on when it comes down to that specific range. And, and the way that I like to approach this is we're deal hunters. That's the premise of you know the way that I personally invest is you have to understand the value of the specific car that you're buying. And it takes very little time to actually understand what a car is worth. You can you know, look on OfferUp, you can look on Craigslist, you can look at Facebook Marketplace, Let Go. Those are four very popular platforms, at least in the Arizona and California area. Uh, and the really cool thing about this car market is, uh, let's start with a very generic, right, specific car. Let's say it's a, like a 2003 Honda Accord. Search up in your area for a 2003 Honda Accord. Determine and write down, right, in a, maybe an Excel sheet or maybe on a little notebook, the lowest prices that you find it for and the highest prices. And then with all the bullets that you are making, right, of like what those cars are worth in your area, you'll be able to get a better understanding of what that specific car is worth. And this is essential to the car buying process is to understand what that car is worth in your area. You know, a car might be worth more in the West Coast in comparison to maybe a place like Arkansas where you might need a four by four or a truck might be more desirable. So because of that uh, demand, a truck might be valued a little bit more. So it's very simple little things and very simple little steps that you can take to determine the value of it. Again, we're making sure that we're getting a good deal. So once you determine the low points and the high points, my goal is to, again, let's say out on the low point, I have $1,500 uh, to start investing with. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this with anywhere from around 1,500 to 2,500. But the way that I like to approach this is, I don't wanna buy a car that's worth $1,500. I want to buy a car that's worth 2000 that's worth 2500 and I want to buy it for 1500 So if I want to buy a car for then 2500 I want to buy a car that's actually worth 3000 3500 And how do you do that? Second step, negotiation. And this is something that I'm very excited to follow up with. I'm actually going to be taking one person, one person in Arizona, and this is something that I've asked you guys in our previous videos. So if you have not watched the previous video, it's very short, it's two minutes. And all I ask you is if you're in the Arizona area, all you have to do is click the link below. I'm not going to ask you for any information. I just want you to join our free Flipping Wheels Facebook group. Once you join that through that Facebook group, it gives me the ability to send you a message. I'm going to pick one person that has a disposable $1,500 to $2,000. It's not to pay us. We're not going to charge you a penny. But as long as you're okay with being on camera, right? And as long as you're okay with you know us as your mentors, myself, Caleb, Weston, I want you to utilize us as your tools to find the best car deal in your area and to turn those $1,500 to $2,000. So again, we're gonna you know, help you and assist you when it comes down to the negotiating aspect and very little simple things. How do you negotiate? Well, you first have to determine the value of that car. Again, that, that spreadsheet, right? From the lowest price to the highest price. And one thing that you'll pick up on, right, is you'll begin to see patterns. Maybe the cars with the higher mileage, right, begin to sell for a little bit less. 
maybe with the cars that have a salvage title, of course, sell for a little bit less. You might want to remove those, right? Uh, when it comes down to maybe some like physical wear, right? Uh, mechanical wear. Um, those are different things that you need to take into consideration and you maybe want to take someone that is a little bit more knowledgeable if you're someone that's just getting started when it comes down to like how to inspect a car. But the really cool thing about this is you can begin to leverage very little simple things. You can point out certain things about the you know physical appearance of the car, you know, um, also the overall interior. Uh, mechanically, if it's sound, if it's going to need a little bit of work and what you're going to have to do to it. Maybe it looks a little rough and you are going to need to dedicate a little bit of time to you know, clean it up. Uh, but just you dedicating time to clean it up is leverage. You know, telling them that it, it just looks dirty and uh, it's going to need a lot of work. And it's very little simple things that you can point out about the car that are obvious and what you would like to pay for it. And again, the goal is not to buy a $1,500 car for $1,500, but to determine its value, right? To find a car that's worth $2,500 to $2,000 and then negotiate your way down to $1,500. You know, let's say you're a cash buyer and that you want to buy it today. You have cash in hand and you just make a bunch of offers. If someone is willing, right, to sell that car at that specific time and they're encouraged and motivated to sell, then great. You just found yourself a deal. And at the very end of the day, that's the whole point. And then the last step, create an effective listing. This is something that we're going to assist you with as well. Four platforms that I talked about today that not everyone utilizes. One of the things that I do want you to know is that Craigslist now charges $5 per listing. So a lot of people are not posting on Craigslist, but Craigslist is one of the most popular reselling platforms for cars and motorcycles. So again, that $5 investment might be worth it, right? Because now they're filtering out a lot of people. Then you have Offer, Facebook Marketplace, you have Let Go. The more exposure, the better. So take good pictures, have a nice brief description, have bullet points on key things that you wanna really highlight, um, and then just make sure that you present it in a very presentable and desirable way. Again, how would you like to buy that car? Your goal is not to, in my eyes, the way that I like to do things and the way that I like to do business is, you know, I like to enjoy my cars. I like to buy them for a good deal, drive them around, right? So I'm driving around my investment and I post them for sale. I post them for sale while I'm enjoying them. So, you know, I make myself available. And if someone, again, bites on the deal, right? Because I'm here to present someone with a deal. I want to give someone a good deal. I want to make it desirable. And usually one of the tips that I want to give you is you normally get the, you know, if it's a high volume car, you normally get your best offer within three days. This is something in my experience and that's all I can really speak from. But in my experience, you usually get, if it's, if you post it effectively and efficiently, you normally get your best offer within the first three days. So make sure that you're not greedy and then make sure that if you can lock in three to $700 worth of profit for a $1,500 investment and you enjoyed the car while you, you know, were, were driving it, you know, you registered it, you go ahead and you sell it, right? And then you go get your prorated refund back on that registration. You paid no sales tax if you're in Arizona and you just made $500 to $700 profit. And guess what? Then you scale up. Now you buy a $2,000 car. Um, now you buy a car that's worth $2,500 for $2,000. And then from that point, then you move to a $5,000 car from $5,000 to $7,000, from $7,000 to $10,000. And then guess what? Now at the end of the day, you might end up with a nice Mustang, Camaro, Challenger, Charger, or whatever it is that you want to buy. But again, the, the main focus is I like to empower people to be deal hunters. You just need to ed educate yourself on how to identify and determine what a deal is how to negotiate, and then how to create an effective listing. Again, if you guys need more assistance with this, I do want to remind you that the Flipping Wheels 2.0 recourse update is going to be this Sunday. So we're going to relaunch the entire Flipping Wheels lesson library. Um, and again, if you guys want to partake in our Arizona challenge, all you guys have to do is click that first link in the description. I really do appreciate you guys' time. Continue working hard, continue following dreams, let your passion be what drives your success. Please don't feel afraid to comment down below any thoughts uh, and feel free to share this with anyone that you think that maybe wants to partake in this, uh, you know, summer challenge. Uh, like always, guys, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.